Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Theological Leftovers. I want to talk about common idolatry today, something that is very common in our lives and can cause some real challenges for us when it comes to our faith in the one true God. I read a quote that I liked a lot that said, God never promised to bless what you choose. And I think this gets to the heart of of what is idolatry. Idolatry is more than just that hunk of wood over there, that that piece of metal over there that's been formed into a statue or something like that. Idolatry ultimately is something that exists in our hearts. And I think it begins with this idea that, that God should bless us according to how we choose. This is the whole idea of creating these idols, is I want a God who helps me with this particular need. I want this, and so I'm looking for a God like uh, like um, an employer would look for an employee, you know, and we've got our little job application here, and if you meet the criteria, then you get to be my God. And, and this is idolatry. This is the heart of idolatry. We as Christians often fall into this trap, expecting God to bless what we choose, treating God sort of like he's a, a genie or something like that. And that's not who God is, clearly. God does bless us according to his promises, according to his wisdom, and according to his love for us. So this, why is this important? Well, because as Christians, if we fall into this trap of thinking that God should answer all of our prayers the way we want them to be answered, that, that, we, um, that, that God should, should give us, um, should bless us according to our choices, what ends up happening is it doesn't happen. He doesn't bless us according to our choices, according to what we want and according to what we think we need. Um, we don't receive the blessings we expect. And then we start to wonder, where's God? Is he distant? Is he not as powerful as he thought? Is he mad at me? Did I do something wrong? Is God not loving? Be- because he's not answering my prayers the way I think that he should. But this is, this is idolatry that's creeped into our hearts. God never promised to bless whatever you choose. He never made that promise. Instead, what we get are promises like in Psalm 128, verse 1, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. So what we want isn't what we want, (laughs) isn't what our hearts cry out for necessarily, because our hearts we struggle with. You know, we recognize that our reason is faulty. Our emotions are all up and down and all over the place. But, But what we, thanks be to God, thanks be to to the Holy Spirit and the faith that's been created, what we really want is for God's will to be done, whatever that is. And if that means that what lies ahead of me is something that I do not desire for myself, then I'll rejoice in that path because that's the path that God has decided that I need to be on, either for the sake of my own faith, for the sake of the faith of my neighbor, probably both. God never promised to bless whatever you choose. He has not promised that, but he has promised to be a blessing to you. And especially he has kept that promise by sending his son. Ultimately, we are blessed in Christ because in Christ, we've been given the forgiveness of sins. We have been made holy saints, righteous people, children of God, and we have been given the kingdom of heaven eternally. We've been given eternal life. Our blessings ultimately are found in Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean that God doesn't bless us um, in this world with temporary things. Clearly he does. Look at me. I'm not on camera completely naked. God has blessed me with closing. Thanks be to, We can all give thanks for that, right? And we can give thanks. It's a sunny day, but, but I've got a nice quiet office. I've got the microphone and I can, I can share this stuff with you. These are all uh, great blessings from God. You can look around in my office and you can see all kinds of blessings. You can see my family in the background. You can see the hobby that I love. Um, you can see all this wonderful thing, but you also see that picture in the background of Jesus calming the storm. There are going to be storms. There are going to be struggles. And and if if I'm looking for a God who takes that completely out of my life, um, then what I'm trying to do is to create an idol. And those idols can't do that anyway. 
right? No idol ever really accomplished anything because it's not real. It's not truly God. Right? But God has promised there will be storms. There will be struggles. There will be suffering. He promises even that will be a blessing for us. He will not just see us through it, but he will bless us by those things. And he will give us opportunity to be a blessing to our neighbors in the midst of those things. So again, you can just see it by looking around the back of my office behind me. You can see how God blesses us with temporary things and physical things and how yet challenges are going to be part of life, most certainly. Ultimately, though, our blessings are found in Jesus Christ who gives us forgiveness, life, and salvation. God never promised to bless whatever you choose. Get that sort of thinking out of your mind and out of your heart and you'll understand God much better. God bless you all. God bless your week.